Ok Men's Fellowship, Monday the 27th at 6.30. Don't forget about that. Also, Saturday, October the 2nd, is a ladies' meeting at Jackson County Baptist Church. Uh, if you would, see my wife, or you ladies are interested in that. So it's October the 2nd. All right, let's get our prayer list out. If you would, get your prayer list out. We'll go through this, okay? All righty. Uh, let's re remember our... Uh, Remember Brother Ed, uh, they left this morning early. Uh, they did make it out there. And so uh, he called right before service, said they were having a real good time. And uh, so they're they're uh, excited to be there. And uh, here comes another one. Brother Todd, that's yours right there. Look now. Hey, Amen. She forgot her shoes. Jocelyn, come on, girl. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, let's, uh, so they're out there having a good time. He's with two of his grandsons, so they're enjoying themselves. They're, they're going to be out there for a few days. So pray for them and uh, also pray for, continue to pray for Miss Brenda. She's feeling a lot better. Uh, continue to pray for the prodigals of our church. We've been praying hard uh, for them and our country and our church families. We ought to be praying for each other. Amen. Uh, uh, our unsaved loved ones, we've all got them. And uh, we need to continue to pray for them that the Lord would save them. And uh, our church attendance uh, is getting better, man, I think. Uh, folks are getting through this COVID and things like that. So let's continue to pray. Our Wednesday nights are looking a little better. But let's uh, do more that, uh, that we can to try to get that, that, that up, okay? Our church finances, let's pray for that. Do all that we can to help that there. And... Uh, uh, do be praying for our bus ministry. Uh, we did run buses again on Sunday. It went well. Had a good turnout. So let's continue to pray for that. And uh, Brother John heard as he's dealing into the jails, uh, they are giving him a hard time over there, trying to uh, try not to really let him in. Uh, I do understand, you know, these places are short-staffed and things like that, but they, Brother John's still doing all he can to get in there and preach to those guys. So... Uh, he was. They didn't let him in last time, uh, so just pray that the next time he goes, he doesn't have any problems as he tries to get in over there, okay? Um, all right, let's go over here to our list. If you would, Bob and Dorothy Storms, uh, we do have them on here, but I specifically would like for you to pray for Miss Dorothy Storms. We went by there yesterday to visit them, and she's uh, she had a she had some uh, tests done on her neck, and they said it's she has severe arthritis all through her neck, very very severe. She's having to keep a, a heat wrap on there. Um, a good bit of the time she's having a hard time like moving her neck and things like that a lot of pain uh, so if you would pray for her um, remember brother Ed Lynn he's still waiting on uh, a kidney um, let's remember the shoe mates as well um, brother uh, you can Mac McDevitt you can you can mark that off your list he's he's home doing good uh, so let's also remember the Owens, Trish and Les Owens' daughter, okay? Um, I haven't heard anything as far as what's going on with that, but she's pregnant um, and with twins. I, I think I think that's right. Uh, either way, she is pregnant, but she does have COVID. And I, I think uh, they, were, they were talking about maybe putting her on a ventilator uh, last... Yeah. 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 They were talking about maybe having to put her on a ventilator, so they were going to have to take the babies. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't heard anything. So hopefully they're doing okay. Also remember the McCoy family. Brother uh, David McCoy passed away, and uh, he went home to be with the Lord. I know we've been praying for him and his family, but. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he died on the 40th, his 40th anniversary of being the pastor at People's Baptist Church. So uh, let's pray for them. I know they're they're hurting over there uh, for the loss of their their preacher, and uh, he was a big asset to the ministry, and uh, he'll be missed uh, greatly. Uh, let's see. 
remember Brother Doug Fisher as well. Um, haven't heard a whole lot on him. I think he's just trying to recover. And uh, remember Brother Mike's brother, Rusty Fitzsimmons. Uh, pray for him. And uh, Brother Les Owens as well as he's waiting for a heart transplant. All right. All right, let's, let's do this. Uh, everybody that can, if you're able, let's come get around the altar tonight and uh, let's pray. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sit down. I'm, I just, I'm lying. I, does anybody have anything you'd like to add to the list? I'm sorry, Ms. Gill. Layla Williams. <clears throat> Remember, Layla Williams, she's 16 years old and she's missing. Anybody have anything else you'd like to add? Brother Todd's birthday today. Amen. If my wife was still in here, we'd sing happy birthday. We still can. All right, let's do it. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brother Todd. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Amen. 50, 52. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, does anybody have anything else quickly before you'd like to, before we pray? All right, let's all that can, if you would. Now you can come. I was just kidding earlier. If you would, come get around the altar, and uh, we'll have some men pray. And uh, we'll have Brother Tony, if you would pray, open us up in prayer. Good to have Brother Jim back. If you would, close us in prayer once Brother Tony's done, Brother Jim. Father, we thank you so much for another day. We'll be able to come to your house and worship Amen. As you're getting in your seats, you would turn to Proverbs chapter 22 tonight. Proverbs chapter 22. I'm going to give you a break. 
from Noah. Amen. Something the Lord put on my heart today as I was reading. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 22, look at verse number 28, if you would. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 28. I do want to encourage you uh, to uh, attend our prayer meetings if you could. Wednesday mo or morning, afternoon at noon here at the church. And uh, Thursday nights, 6.30 here. If you can't make it to the Wednesday in the midday, when I understand a lot of you work and things like that. But um, Thursday night at 6.30. 6 30. Uh, if you would be here, Brother Tony and these men, they or ladies, whoever wants to come, uh, I encourage you to come be a part of that. Pray for our church and some of these things. All right. Proverbs 22. Let's look at verse number 28. Bible says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. I'm going to read that once, uh, one, once more. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. You know, a lot of times when we look at this passage of Scripture, uh, we, you know, in my mind, I've always thought about the ancient landmarks and the things that the, those before us have set. And uh, so I looked it up today, and uh, it still has the, the same idea as what I was thinking, uh, but it really, is, it really means uh, to not invade or intrude. Uh, this is according to Matt, Matthew Henry, uh, to invade or intrude on another's property. Uh, to not steal uh, from your neighbor's land, so to speak, uh, to add to your own. See, these landmarks uh, were really essentially fence rows or lines. Uh, Brother, Brother Jim, if, if instead of building a fence, uh, you know, uh, a lot of you on your property, I'm sure uh, you may or may not know, but I'm sure some, in most properties, there's a pen. So if you find the pen and you go to, to the, each corner and you can find your landmarks, you can find uh, what property belongs to you inside of those pens. And so you can, it's a guideline. It's a property line, essentially. And so what they're saying here is, is remove not those ancient guidelines, those ancient landmarks, those, uh, those things, those, uh, those markers uh, to show you where you are to stay and where you're not to cross. Amen. And so I was reading that today and I looked up the meaning and, uh, so I, I, you know, before I was thinking, <coughs> you know, the different things that, the, you know, our, our forefathers and preachers before us have set up things like that for us to, uh, to go by and guidelines for us to go by. And that's essentially kind of the same idea, but it also, on the other hand, it's not. And so I thought about that tonight. I thought about those barriers. I thought about those lines, and I thought about those markers in our life and what, it, what the harm would be if we were to remove those things or to move those uh, markers from our lives. And he does say here, uh, he uses the word remove. Amen. Uh, to take away, to do away with. It's Im let me just say this: It's important for us in our lives to have lines. Amen. It's important to have guardrails. It's important to have lines that we do not cross. Amen. It's important for us to have uh, boundaries set up in our Christian life. It's important for us to have boundaries set up in our spiritual life. It's important for us to have boundaries set up in our home. It's important for us to have boundaries set up in our marriages, uh, in, in our child, with our children. Lines that we set that we that we just that we just don't cross and that we don't remove. Uh, no matter how uncomfortable it gets, no matter how uh, how 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 tight it may seem at times, uh, but it's important. It's crucial for us to have lines, Amen. Biblical lines, things that we set up that are spiritual, things that we set up that are <coughs> going to help us in our Christian walk and our Christian life, Amen. Uh, so number one, if you're taking notes, when you move when you move the landmarks. It adds confusion. When you move these landmarks, it adds confusion. How? Uh, well, because you don't really know what's yours and what's who else's. Amen? And we all know that who's the author of confusion? The devil. Amen. He's the author of confusion. So if we move these lines, whether we bring them in closer or we push them out farther, 
<clears throat> then we're confused as to where they are supposed to go back to. Amen. I don't know if you've ever uh, walked a property or anything like that, but, uh, you know, we've had different hunting properties over the years, and, and, and we try to, try, try to find our line. Why? Because you don't want to cross that line. Amen. From around, around here, if you cross the line, it might cost you. Amen. We're in Georgia. Y'all know what it means to cross somebody's property line. Amen. And it's not good. Amen. Y'all y'all have heard the story about the coon dog that was hunting one night, went hunting, and that dog, man, he, he was on a hot track. And y'all know what that means? He's tracking the coon. He's loud. He's barking. All of a sudden, he gets real quiet. Brother Jim, you, you don't hear him. And the guy, you know, he's hunting with him. He, he's looking at this dog. He's wanting to buy this dog from this guy. And he said, what happened? He lost the track. He said, I don't want that dog. He said, hold on a minute. And then all of a sudden, he starts barking again. He said, all he was doing, he was crossing posted land. That's all. Amen. He got real quiet when he crossed that posted land. Amen. So you know it's important to know your lines. Because if you don't, it's confusing. You get real confused. How can we be confused if we draw, if we lose the lines. Number one, it, it, it gets confusing spiritually. It gets confusing spiritually. Because if we start to cross lines and move landmarks in our life, and we begin to, uh, to you know, if we begin to blur the lines, then we just, we don't know what's what. Amen, spiritually. We don't know which, ways, which way to go. Uh, we don't know. We don't have any kind of barriers to show us any kind of guidelines to hold us to what's right and what's wrong. Amen. Listen. And today, our society is doing a great job at blurring the lines. Amen. They've even gone so far as to blur the lines of gender. They've gone so far as to blur the lines uh, of of of. Uh, of male and female and uh, who to marry and who not to marry and uh, what bathroom to go into. Amen? And so it's important, it's crucial that we have lines, that we have guardrails, that we have landmarks because spiritually speaking, if we, if we throw these things out, if we don't have guidelines to go by, <coughs> we, we begin to die spiritually. We get confused spiritually. How is that? Well, we ought to have landmarks set up such as daily devotions. Amen? Daily devotion, the daily prayer life. And if we don't have those things set up, we begin to get confused and begin to think, well, maybe I don't need a daily devotion. Maybe I don't need a daily prayer life. Maybe I don't need a daily walk with the Lord. Maybe I can get by just once a week. Amen? we got to have these things set up. It also causes confusion scripturally. Scripturally. In our life, in our Christian uh, life today, a lot of churches are, are confused on the scriptures. Amen? The Bible says to rightly divide the word of truth. And we're in this, we're in this, for some reason, we're in this whacked out generation of, that, that's my generation, Brother Todd. It's my generation. Now, they, that, now they're, they're, they're veering from the King James. I don't understand that. Why? They're confused. Why? Because they moved the lines. How did we move the lines? Well, I don't know. Maybe they started hanging out with somebody that wasn't King James. They started listening to somebody that wasn't King James. They started following and reading after people. Listen, that's moving the lines. And I understand all the time, listen, some of these other guys, they have good stuff that you can read after, follow after, and that's fine. But listen, when it comes to certain things, Brother Jim, we should never move the landmarks. When it comes to certain things, we should never remove the landmarks. Amen? Uh, listen, anybody can be saved. We're not living in a day of Calvinism where uh, there's only elect few. That's another big thing right now. The King James Bible and Calvinism. 
Why is it so hard to understand that for, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life? How hard is it to believe that whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord? That's not hard to understand. And listen, but the lines have been moved and the landmarks have been moved. Now everybody thinks it's just an elect few. That's not what my Bible teaches. Amen. My Bible teaches me that if I pray and ask the Lord to come to my heart and to save me, then that's what it is. Amen. But so many, play, so many people, so many places, they're, they're confused. They're confused. It's important for us, listen to me, to understand why and how and why we believe these things. Amen. They've gotten themselves confused. Scripturally, spiritually, and when it comes to the topic of separation, when you move those landmarks, listen, the Bible tells us to come out from among the world and be separate. Be separate. Now when you walk in some churches today, Brother John, you don't know what's what. It looks like a rock concert. I was talking to, I was talking to uh, Brother Ed the other day. He went and visited a, a local church here. Uh, I'm not going to say where. He said he lasted about 15 minutes. He said it was a full-on rock concert. He said he looked over at the, uh, another older gentleman next to him. He said, is this their music? He said, yeah, they'll do this for about 30 minutes. So he got up and left. You know, what, you know what's wrong with them? They're confused. They've moved the landmarks. No way should you walk into this church. Listen to me. No way should you walk into this church or any church in America and be confused of whether or not you're at an ACDC concert or if you're at church. You shouldn't be confused by that. We shouldn't walk into church and wonder, is this guy going to preach or is he a stand-up comedian? Yeah. You ought to know that he's a preacher yeah. because he carries himself like a preacher, because he looks like a preacher, he acts like a preacher, he talks like a preacher. Amen? He's not calling you dude and saying, what's up, man? He's not calling God dude. And I've heard him do it. They're confused. Don't move the landmarks. Don't move them. We need to leave them where they are. Yeah. Amen. Secondly, when you move the landmarks, when you move the lines, it causes contention. Not only confusion, but it causes contention. It causes contention outwardly. As I was saying a minute ago, when you cross lines, you got a problem with your neighbor. Amen. I lived, the house we just sold, it was two acres. It was a perfect two-acre square in the middle of a hundred acres. We were dead right in the middle. And I, when we moved in, you know, I, I didn't want to cross any lines, Brother John. Because the guy that lived at the end of the road was crazy. Amen. Lives in a camper with no heat and air, no running water, no electricity, and he's got guns leaning up against trees out in his yard. All throughout, all, all on his yard. And I thought, he's probably got bodies buried up there. Hey, man, he came down and finally introduced himself to me. He said, hey man, we'll get along real good as long as you ain't got no cats. I was like, what? He said, I kill every cat I see. I was like, praise the Lord, we're going to be good neighbors. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Your cats are safe, amen. And so, and, and so I thought, you know, I'm not going to cross this guy's boundaries. I'm going to figure out where mine are, and I'm going to put some pins up, and I'm going to stay on my side of the fence, amen. Why? I didn't want no contention with this guy. But turns out he was a cool guy. He let me just hunt and do whatever I wanted to do. But when you cross lines... You begin to create enemies. Amen. Because why? There, there comes a certain point, Brother Todd, where I have to draw a line in the sand and I say, I can't fellowship with you anymore. Amen. There's been preachers that I know that I have to say, okay, 
I, I can't fellowship with you. Why? Because you crossed the line. You say, I don't know about that, Brother Jesse. I don't know if that's right. Well, I, I remember I remember several places in Scripture where the Lord drew some lines when it came to the Pharisees. Amen. He's telling us right here, don't remove the landmarks. Don't remove the lines. Man, when it, when it comes to compromise, when it comes to moving these lines, it causes contention outwardly. It also causes contention inwardly. How's that? Because then you begin to wonder, well, you know, I've been following this way for so long. Is it, is it right or is it wrong? You know, that's the problem we're having right now with some of these, some of these guys, that are, uh, these recovering fundamentalist guys. Because, because now, they're t- now they're telling all these people that got saved in an independent fundamental Baptist church that, th- that all of that was wrong. It was good for them to get saved in. It was good enough for them to get saved in and called to preach in and get raised up in, but now all of a sudden it's just not good enough. And you know what they're doing? They're causing contention. They're causing contention in our churches. They're causing contention in amongst preachers. They're causing contention amongst families. And it's wrong. Why? What did they do? They moved the lines. They removed them. They completely removed them. They don't, well, they, well, we don't need to do this anymore. It's not necessary. We don't need to do this anymore. It's not necessary. I had one the other day on Twitter. He said, we don't need American flags in our churches anymore. Coming from a quote, unquote, so-called preacher. I told him he was wrong. Matter of fact, I told him he was a joke. That's what I told him. We don't need American flags in our churches because it's, it's, it's symbolism. But one of their services, they had a big giant banner with their logo of their podcast on it in a church service. I said, can you explain that one to me? Moving on. It causes contention. It also causes contention visually. Not outwardly, inwardly, and visually. Because why? Even if you didn't mean to, Brother Jim, it makes you look like you did it with malice or evil intent. You get what I'm saying? When you move these lines either way, it makes it look like you did it with evil intent in your heart. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you did it. Maybe you did it because you thought it was right. Maybe you did it because you thought it was the best thing. Maybe you did it because you thought it was a good idea or you thought it was going to help somebody. But when, it, when you look at it and you look on the outside looking in, it looks like, well, maybe, you know, maybe he's a compromiser. What is he doing? Why is he removing the landmarks? Why is he changing all this stuff? Why is she doing this? Why is she talking that way? Why? But why? Because it, it just visually looks bad. And it could ruin your testimony. Lastly, when you move the lines, it causes contemplation. It begins you to cause you to contemplate different things. It gives you. It, it starts to cause you to think about maybe crossing the line. Maybe crossing that line. We, uh, me and a buddy of mine, had a hunting property, and this guy, just one of those guys. He puts his tree stand on the edge of our property. Brother Mike, on the, on the, on, at our property line, he's looking at a posted sign on our property. One tree over, he sets up a tree stand. Amen? Just one of those guys. Well, you know what happens most of the time when you shoot a deer or something? It could run over on somebody else's property. 
Or if you're sitting there in that tree stand and there's a big deer over there on our side, what are you going to think about? I bet you I could kill that deer and drag it over here on my property for anybody knows. Right? When you're sitting on the line, you begin to be tempted. And you begin to think, well, maybe it's better over there. Maybe I can get away with this over there. Maybe I can get away with just easing over there and coming back and easing over there and coming back and easing over there and coming back. But there's consequences. There are consequences to this. Amen? How? Why? Because we called the game warden. And we called him on our side. Amen? He was hunting the next year. He then moved a little closer, Brother Shannon, and he was over across the line. Mr. Green Pants got him a ticket. Amen? You know, that, there's consequences. When you're sitting on the fence and you're sitting on the line, and then if you've removed the line and you don't even know where it's at anymore, it could cause a lot of pain, a lot of loss, a lot of suffering to your family. It could also cause you to maybe want to erase the lines. And eventually, eventually, you forget the lines. You know what my burden is? Is that group of kids back there in that room. That's my burden. Why? Because they're the next generation. And Miss Gail, if we've erased the lines and we've removed the landmarks, they're not going to know what to go by. I don't know why everybody feels the need to change church. I'm just being real. What's wrong with how we do church? And the songs that we sing and the way we do our music. All of a sudden, now all oh, that's just wrong. Where did that come from? Now all of a sudden, we got to change it all. And they're not even going to know. They're not even going to real. They're not even going to get to experience the services that you've been able to experience in your lifetime. They're not even going to get to know what those hymns are about and what they're like. Some of these kids are never going to get to hear a hymnal sang with parts and harmony, sang the right way. They're never going to, they're not, listen, some of them, some of them, listen, they're, they're not even going to use a King James Bible. Why is that so important to you, Brother Jesse? Because it's right. It's right. We got to hold the line. Clean, listen, clean the weeds off of it. Make sure everybody sees it. Make sure everybody knows where it's at, Brother John. Make sure them bus kids know where the markers are so they don't destroy their life. We don't have to change anything. We don't have to change this. We don't have to change anything. Listen, preach the book. Preach the Bible. Share the gospel. Spread the gospel. That's all we got to do. We don't have to change nothing. Amen. I don't have to try to be cool to reach anybody. I just got to have I just got to have the gospel. I don't have to look cool. Amen, even though I am. Somebody help me. I don't have to look cool. You know, we don't have to appeal to the to the world. When, when, when sinners come into this church, we ought to love them, hug them, give them, listen, give them, show them compassion and love, but they ought to be uncomfortable here. Because we, sin makes people uncomfortable. 
they ought to be able to see the landmarks and see where we stand. Amen. Remove, he said, remove not the landmarks. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to be in your house tonight. I thank you for the landmarks that have been set up before us by preachers before us and the word of God and these things. But Lord, you know, I know this passage of scripture may not necessarily be speaking of that. Lord, I pray God that you'd help us to keep the lines where they are, to preach it like you told us to and to do it like you told us to and spread the gospel like you told us to and sing like you told us to sing and love like you told us to love and have compassion like you did. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us now as we leave. God, that you'd keep us safe, bring us back once again safely on Sunday. We'll be sure to thank you. Give us a good day, Sunday, a good crowd. Pray, God, that we'll have a good time fellowshipping with each other. We'll be sure to thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.